Hi there, it's Dr. Scott McLean, and we're going to be placing an N1 base crown. So this is a base level prosthesis. So we're going to show you a little bit about what I'm talking about, because this is the concept of one abutment, one time. And so it uh, is a beautiful looking crown. You can see here with a universal base and then the zirconia with a angulated screw channel. So fantastic options because we end up getting platform shifting at the time of surgery and then you never take that off. So the first thing I'm going to use is a floss threader just to make sure that I'm protecting the patient. So we are going to be using an N1 trioval implant. You can see here this trioval nature is very new to Nobel BioCare and you have this platform shift on the top of it. So with this type of implant you're able to have dual level flexibility so you can restore this crown at implant level using our standard way that we've always done things in the past or you can go to an n1 base level and so the n1 base level allows you to have this one abutment one time concept so once the abutment goes on the platform shift is going to be in both of these options but you're going to get this right away and protect the bone so this prosthetic flexibility gives you lots of options to either do it at the implant level or to do it at the base level, which is shown right here. So we have connective tissue, which is then going to be sealed at this point, and this allows you to seal the implant. This is a zeal abutment and also a tri-ultra tri -ultra implant. And when you do this, you get the junctional epithelium and the connective tissue sealing the base abutment, which... Um, has been showing so far really great results with protecting the bone with zero bone loss concepts. So our goal is to have this uh, hydrophilic implant, rough surface, one abutment one time, get a platform shift, have uh, soft tissue healing, maintain this, and also have the zeal seal that everyone's talking about, which gives you that color that you're seeing here, the anodized surface, which is very, very hydrophilic. It's called ultra hydrophilic. And so this allows you to really do well. So the surgeon would place the abutment, the base abutment at the time of surgery. And then you can choose different options. So they're going to put the implant either bone level or slightly below, usually a little bit below. And then you put this abutment on, which is the base abutment. And the N1 base abutment has a very vertical type of shape. So then we're able to put this on as well, which is a scannable abutment. So we could put it cover screw on or a healing cap or this abutment. You're going to really be using the Omnigrip M, but if you're putting the abutment on, you'd use a base level abutment screw or driver. So here's what it looks like in a scanned model. You can see the replica and we're going to do a restoration. So the restoration has been made on this model. We can see the base level replica and the replica is going to enable the lab to create this beautiful crown. And I have this in uh, chlorhexidine in a Pyrex sterile bowl, ready to go in. You can see the universal base on the bottom of this, which enables you to have a very, very strong crown and uh, to have this solid zirconia structure, which comes in many colors and enables your technician to really do a beautiful job for you. So one of the things I like to do is uh, we're going to make a screw mentable crown, which means it's an abutment that's cemented outside of the mouth, and then it becomes screw retained. So the uh, lab would create this screw channel, and this can be angulated. And then try to hold it on the model. So I want you just to try it and practice on the model so that you know and have your hands holding it. So you have this cupping action that holds the uh, implant crown in place. And then this enables you to really have uh, an easier time putting it in. So we're going to use the OmniGrip Mini Screwdriver, which is a mini version of the OmniGrip. It goes to 20 Newton centimeters in this case. And this is used for bridge work. This is also used for the single crown and um, or even for the surgical cover screw. So it's right here. And when you look at this, you can see it's got this smaller version of the OmniGrip screwdriver that's used for the angulated screw channel. So it's a gold color, so you can see that it's different than the other one. And uh, very delicate and very strong. So it's amazing how this screws down. So you put the screw in and try to keep everything straight when you're lining it up. 
and line the screw up into the base abutment and then enable you to have this in the position where you want it. So this is what we're going to do on the patient and we're going to have the patient um, in in a moment and you can see that this crown is going to be put just below the soft tissues because I have a 1.75 millimeter base abutment and this is what you want to be using in my mind is to use a limited amount. Now we can push out the replica out of the printed model and this enables them to put them in and put them but I don't have the proper tool to take it out but this is a printed model and you can see that the base abutment is replicated um, here and you don't have to have the actual base abutment it just has to have the interface to be the same and this enables you to have a platform shift on the base abutment and then the crown is going to sit in the junctional epithelium uh, creating a really nice uh, format because you're not going to have cement down in here causing a problem and then you snap it back in the model make sure it's flat here to make sure it's at the right level so you can see as we put this together that it uh, is just like any other crown that we would do. It's, uh, it's fabulous. So I'm going to take that floss threader we were talking about earlier. And I found that this <laughs> saves me so much frustration. Um, we'll put this through on the um, driver. So this is the OmniGrip M driver uh, with the handle. And you can see I'm pulling this through so easy. And this is something I would recommend doing. It's, it makes your life so much easier to get that floss through. I struggled with this for years, and uh, and I just thought, okay, let's use some periodontal things from the hygiene program and try to get that in there, and it made it so much easier. And of course, we put the floss on so that we can protect the patient. The last thing we want to do is have the patient swallow this driver. That would not be a good day. And so we would also recommend you put in some gauze, and I don't always do that, but I would say a 4 by 4 is a prudent way to do it, and... Uh, that can just protect you from having the patient swallow things because these are so small. Now we'll have the OmniGrip Mini, which is going to be our choice. Because the base level screw, we, the surgeon would have used that, so I use this when I place the abutment. But over here you can see the OmniGrip Mini, which is OmniGrip M. And this is what we're going to use to place the crown and also to take the healing abutment off, which is actually an iOS scannable abutment. So you can see here... On top of this, we use the white scannable iOS abutment. So this allows us to scan over with the intraoral scanner and then pick up that model really easy. And it's uh, fabulous. You know, it makes it so that we can create this 3D modeling with this positioner. And so this is positioning the timing of the implant, the depth of the implant, the angle of the implant, and also two adjacent teeth. So it allows the lab to, to then create the uh, replica in a position so that they can create the new N1 crown, which is a base level crown. So our goal is then to create this uh, beautiful crown that's going to slide in. So we're going to take off the iOS scannable healing abutment. The patient's worn this for the last three months. And we can see when we go to take this off, we can look down on top of it that the tissues are really responding very well around this. And um, so this is a screw through the iOS abutment. So it's not something that you put in like a light bulb. It's something that you have a screw that goes through the abutment because it's trioval and it's, so it's triangular, so you can't screw it in. So it's more shaped the way the base level abutment is. And so you have to look at the base level abutment as being a triangle shape as well. And then the trioval implant, which is underneath this, is going to also be a trioval shape. So it's triangular, but it also has an oval shape at the apex of the implant. So as we take this off, we're going to grab it with the OmniGrip driver and then just pull it off. And so the patient uh, wanted to have a little anesthetic here. She found that the tissues are quite tight around this and so she decided that she was going to do that but this is an ios scannable abutment and um, it would be a single use only but you put it on and then let the patient go and then anyone with an intraoral scanner can go over uh, the original scan when you did any kind of work and uh, make the the crown so we'll take the omnigrip m and we'll try to position this 
And we can see that when we're going to position it, the patient is uh, feeling a little bit of tissue response. So we're going to give some anesthetic. And so we'll do that. So she decided that she'd like to have some anesthetic to make her feel better. So we took some hurricane and we spray this into a cup and we'll use a Q-tip just to soak the area to give her a really good uh, benzocaine reaction to prevent the needle exposure from hurting as much. So I find this works quite well. I like the hurricane. It doesn't taste that great, but it seems to work. And I can also use the uh, Q-tip to put pressure on and then put the anesthetic directly next to that. And it seems to help them do a better job. But she did not want to have the abutment. And so I said, no problem. We can do this uh, just by adding a little bit of anesthetic. And uh, that's no problem. So we put a little bit in the palatal area. And she seemed to do very well with that. And we start the procedure pretty quickly because this is really going to work fast. So the goal is to line up that screw with the Omnigrip driver to be straight into that base level abutment. And so you can see when we put this in that uh, we can tighten it down and this is going to enable us to, we hold it like a, a lobster. So you, know, you can tell I'm from an area that has lobster, but you hold it like a lobster claw. And then you put the screw in directly in the center because the screw is gonna rotate a little bit. So you try to keep it straight and then rotate in and then making sure that your floss is not wrapping all up and all over the place. You can see I have a four by four gauze in just to protect the patient. And so I tighten this down to finger pressure. So I can tighten as much as I want. And this is gonna enable us to have this into position. So now I can have a look at this in the mirror and I can see the access channels directly in the center of this because it has an angulated screw channel. And you can see that the tissues will now start to develop around this. And um, we'll have her back in and get some pictures later on, but looking good. So we'll take the new prosthetic wrench, the torque driver, and we will start to tighten this down. So it's ideally going to be tightened to 20 Newton centimeters. And you can see on here is 15 and 20. So 20 is the ideal. 15 is for the multi-units with this system. And so you can see here, I'm holding it at 20 to develop some tension. And then I'm gonna come with some sterile Teflon, open this up and take the Teflon out and put it in the chamber, keeping it dry and uh, trying to keep it as clean as possible. Even though this is not connected anywhere near the implant because of the base level abutment and just the way the system works. So you have uh, the base level itself has a very vertical type of V shaped abutment which is showing to be really effective at maintaining bone and uh, doing a good job. So there's the Teflon. I put that into position and I'll take some bulk fill and this is uh, from 3M SP and uh, we put the bulk fill in and then cure that because this is a bit firmer I find uh, from a restoration because I don't want this to not really be falling out when the people are occluding on this and so it makes a, an effective way. So it was pretty easy for the patient. Yeah, she had anesthetic, but really didn't need that. It is uh, something that I think is gonna last her a long time. And that's what I'm interested in with implants is doing something that has long-term benefit and uh, changing patient's quality of life. Because this is up in the aesthetic zone and the narrowness of this abutment system makes it really quite beautiful from that point of view because you get the soft tissue effects and um, get the aesthetics. So you get the color right, and then the patient can uh, live a hopefully a long time showing off this beautiful crown. So this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this has been a presentation about the N1 base level crown. So you can also try them at implant level. If you take the impression at implant level, you do it at implant level. If you take it at the base level, you do it at the base level. So anyway, give it a try and uh, check your occlusion, making sure that you have uh, just some forces over the implant. This is a very strong system and uh, I've been impressed so far. It's uh, been a lot of fun to work with. So there it is. And this is the N1 base level crown. And hopefully the patient will give it a good try.